All right. Come on up here. Come on close. Sit on the rug so I can show you my family tree. Can you all see the pictures? Can you see them? Okay, good. I want you nice and close so that you can see them. Well, let me tell you about some of the people on this tree. What a family tree is, it's all the people or a lot of the people that are in my family. Do you have a family? Raise your hand if you have a family. Yep. Okay, I think we all have a family where we're sitting here. Okay, so this person at the very top, that's my husband, and I love him very, very much. This is my mom, and this is my dad. And then when I was 10, my mom and my dad decided they didn't want to be married anymore. And so then I got a stepdad, and this is him right here, Enzo. Do you see him? Yeah? And then they had a little girl. So when I was 10 years old, how old are you? You're eight. Okay, so two more years, and you'll be 10. Then I had a sister who came into the world. I was 10 years old when she was born. But guess what? Did you know what? Before my mommy and my daddy, they had a mommy, and they had a daddy, and that's my grandmas and my grandpas. And did you know what? You know who this one is right here? Can I show it to you? This is my great grandma. Do any of you have a great grandma? What do you think? This is my great grandma. Does she look like yours? A little bit? A little bit? And that one too? And she has a little puppy. Because she loves that puppy so much. My dad looks like your mama. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, <laughs> so can you hold this picture for me and keep it real safe? Can you sit right there and hold that picture for me and keep it safe? I'm trusting you with it. Only you. You're doing a good job. So these are my family right here on this tree. And each of these people raised me and made me who I am. Now, did you know the reason I put these people on a tree is because I want you to think about what it's like for us to have a tree that we all come from. All of these different roots and branches that come off of a tree are all different parts of families and people that we can be a part of. That's why they call it a family tree. Because different little people come from different branches and different roots and different parts of the tree. Now, do you have, do you have parents? Yeah? Can you point, point to me where are your parents at? Can you point out there? Where are they at? Okay, there. Where are your parents? Where's your, where's your parent at? Right there. There's your parent. Okay, and then where else? Who else? Anyone else? Oh, there's Amber holding. And you have two, don't you? Right here in front of me. Is, and is, who is this? Is that dad? <laughs> yeah, you all have families too. You know who else had a family? Jesus. Jesus had a family. Say that one more time. I have a book about Jesus at home. You have a book about Jesus at home? I have a book about Jesus at home too. Now, do you know why? Do you know how many days we have until Christmas? Four more days? No, more days than that. Do you know? You forgot? Does anybody else know? How, maybe their parents. Maybe the, maybe the adults can help. How many days till Christmas? Does anybody know? 30? 20? Maybe, maybe, maybe the movie Elf can help us. Maybe? Maybe? This is a slide. 27 days. 27 days until we celebrate little baby Jesus' Christmas. Um... So do you know why we celebrate Christmas? Why do we celebrate Christmas? It's Jesus' birthday. And what do we do on birthdays? We go, Happy birthday, baby Jesus. Right? Now, if you listen really, really good today, nope, if you listen really good, you get one of these to go home with you. Thanks, parents. I know you love me. But you have to listen really good. If you don't listen, you can't get one of these. Will you, will you sit and listen? Okay. If you sit and listen at the very last song, you get one of these. I'm going to show you what it does. One more time. Ready? That's what you have to look forward to. Okay. On the back side of this tree is Jesus' family. Because just like I have a family and just like you have a family, in the book about Jesus that you have at home, there is a whole chapter that gives a long list of all of the people that are part of Jesus' family. 
So this is what people think Jesus might have looked like at the very top. We didn't, they didn't really have pictures like we do on our phones and things. So people just sort of draw paintings and had certain ideas. This is Jesus' mom right here. And we think maybe that could be, maybe, maybe that's what Jesus' dad looked like. And did you know that Jesus' mom and dad also had a grandparent right there? Does that look like your mom? No? No, Enzo? Do we want, do we, do we want that uh, little kazoo? Then we got to sit. Then we got to sit. Good job, Enzo. Okay, so this beautiful tree, all of these people are people who were related to Jesus. And did you know that Jesus, he wasn't perfect. He had to learn certain things. He didn't just come out of the womb being able to learn how to read and write and know how to do things like you. How many of you are learning to read? Can you raise your hand if you're learning to read? You already know how to read. Okay, are you learning to be nice and share with people still? I bet. I'm learning to be nice and share with people still. How many of you have ever had to learn how to say sorry to someone? Have you ever had to learn to say sorry to someone? Yeah, I have too. Have you ever had to learn to forgive somebody for when they hurt your feelings and made you really sad? Yep, I know I have too. And guess what? Jesus had to do the same things. And Oh, your friend hurt your feelings? Did you forgive him? That was very good of you because that's exactly what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus, oh, everyone's clapping for you forgiving. Good job. Can you give yourself a pat on the back? Yes, good job. Yes. So Jesus, when he came, he was trying to teach us what his parents also taught him, which was to be kind and to be loving, to forgive people when they make mistakes and to ask other people to forgive us when they make mistakes. And that's a hard thing to do, isn't it? That's not an easy thing to do sometimes. But Jesus came to teach us those really, really important lessons. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes it can be really hard to learn these things, can't it? And sometimes we don't do them perfect. But guess what? That's okay. Because Jesus loves us no matter what. And Jesus wants us to continue to work and, be, and, and to do the very best we can. What's that? My mommy's having a baby. Your mother's having a baby. I don't know if everyone else knows about that yet. Um, <laughs> we'll keep moving forward. <clears throat> so here's the thing. Everybody on this tree, everybody on this tree, they've all made mistakes. Everybody in my family has made mistakes. Everybody in Jesus' family has made mistakes. Have you made a mistake? Yeah. Yeah. We've all made mistakes. None of us are perfect. But the beauty is, is that God is always teaching us to ask other people to forgive us and for us to forgive other people. Because as we do that, we get to learn. Can you do this with me? Can you make, can you make this with your hands? How wide and how tall. And then I need you to do this. Stand up with me. How big. Make yourself as big as you can. Make yourself as big as you can. How big can you make yourself? Can you make yourself big? And how wide and how tall and how long, and then say this with me, the love of God is. Say, the love of God is. You did such a good job. Now, what I want you to do is this. I want you to take a picture of a tree back to your seat with some crayons, and I want you to do what you did for me, what I did for you. I want you to draw a picture of your mom and of your dad, and whoever else in your family. I think I met some grandmas and grandpas when you got baptized. Yeah. Can you take that back to your mom? And you guys can color. Take the, you want to take this, Enzo? Enzo, you're going to want that. Okay, everybody else, grab a piece of paper and grab a crayon, a pack of crayons, and I want you to draw your family's pictures inside of there. And while they're doing that, I want all of you to think about something. In Matthew chapter 1, there's this genealogy, right, that goes on about all these people that were related to Jesus. If you're anything like me, you skip that part. <laughs> it's boring. It's repetitive. It's sort of like, I don't know what the point and the purpose of this. Let's just get on to Matthew chapter 2, right? I'll take this off so you can take me more seriously. Um, <laughs> The reality is, is, what I want you to do is I want you to just take a moment, and we're just going to read the first three lines, and I want you to think about something as, as, I, as I read these first three lines of the genealogy. I want you to think of, do any stories come to your mind when you hear these names? Abraham, this is the beginning of Jesus' genealogy. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, 
the father of Jacob. Whenever I hear Abraham, I think, the father Abraham had many sons, had many sons, had father Abraham, and seen. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Now, if you don't know anything about Tamar, just look up Genesis chapter 38 this week, and you'll be like, oh, wow, she made the cut for that. That's interesting. They named several women in this genealogy. And I know to some of us that may seem odd, but actually, within Judaism, genealogy is always tied to the woman. It's always tied to the, because it is out of her womb that they could best trace the genealogy. You never knew really what man it came from, but you always could trace the woman. So it's interesting, actually, that they use the male genealogy here to trace Jesus' genealogy back. But also in this genealogy, they have the names of several women uh, sprinkled in here. Women that we would know familiar throughout scripture. So here's what I want to invite you to do. I want to invite you during this Advent to maybe this week go and read Matthew chapter 1. Read the genealogy. And as you see the names, I want you to remember and think about the stories that come to you from childhood that you were taught of those different people. But here's what I most want you to remember. I want you to remember how messy they were. How many mistakes they made. How they never got it quite right. They never had it all together. But despite all of that, they're still a part of the story. Despite all that, they still ushered in who Jesus is. Despite all that, there are still people we look to, some of them, as examples of our faith. Our faith has always been a messy, progressive religion. We have always been learning and changing and developing over time. People develop to the point of Jesus and people continue to develop in their beliefs and change after Jesus. And guess what? We're still doing it today as we usher in the next 500 years of Christianity. Why do we say usher in the next 500 years of Christianity? Because every 500 years there seems to be this massive change within our faith. And guess what? That's because we are a messy progressive religion. Always learning from our ancestors, from our tree, from their mistakes and our mistakes, inviting us to forgive them and inviting us to to be forgiven by each other. And so I want us this Christmas, as we hear this story afresh again, to remember that we are a part of a messy people who made messy mistakes with a messy tree, but ultimately brought something that was beautiful into the world. So as imperfect as we are, this is a gift that we are invited to be a part of. So I want us uh, to also embrace... um, Uh, an ancient practice that can go all the way back to 1839 within the Christian tradition, and that is the practice of lighting the Advent candle wreaths. We're in a series called Generation to Generation for Advent as we consider how our story is also just a part of a larger story and narrative. And so from generation to generation, we stop and we consider and we think about the traditions that we embrace as a church, as individuals, as a culture, as a community, as a world, as a theological tradition. And so, but you may not know this, but this is how the Advent candle wreath tradition was started. And I want you to know, because often we don't know much about where heritage and where our history comes from, or the story, or the reason behind what we do. And I think, part of me, that's why I love family trees. That's why I love the genealogy of Jesus included in the story, because it reminds us that it's not just about Jesus. It's about this larger story. It's not just about me. It's about this larger story that we are all a part of. So there's a pastor in Germany who put a wreath out with an old cartwheel, and on it he he put all of these candles. And on the the days of the week, including Saturday, he would light the red candles. But then on Sundays, the four Sundays leading up to to Christmas, the white Christ candle would get lit. Now what's even more interesting is you see the the, the greenery in the middle, um, the evergreen? The evergreen is a symbol of everlasting life because even amidst Christmas, when everything died uh, in nature, the evergreen survived. The evergreen stayed bright all Christmas, all winter long. And so it's a reminder and a picture of everlasting life that the story goes on, that the narrative continues, that, that nothing ever fully ends. There's always this circle, as you can see the Advent candle, the Advent in a circle, the circle of life. And so that's what this is. Now, as time has gone on, this is obviously super ugly to have a huge cartwheel and not everyone just has it laying around their house. Also, this is a lot of candles to have lit back in the day when this is what lit your house. Awesome, great, this is wonderful. Not now, okay? So what we do now is you'll see up here is we have four candles and then we have a white candle in the middle, which is the Christ candle. We light a candle each week leading up to Christmas and then on Christmas we light the Christ candle, which is the white candle 
in the middle. Now at forefront, um, because we have a very, very young congregation, most of you all go somewhere else for Christmas. So we just take off the last two weeks. <laughs> and we have our Christmas service on the 18th. So we will light both the Christ candle and one of the other candles all on the same Sunday and celebrate that moment. But I would like to invite us now to watch this video from the Lees as they reflect on us lighting the very first Advent candle of this season. 